Happy Hop Day, my little hooligans! It's Chris from Socially Awkward Stitching Society coming to you today on our day of the September 2021 Food and Drink Hop. This is one of the new designs in the drop today. It's a series of wine coasters. There are eight different designs and each design gives you a choice of edge treatments of either a bean stitch, which is super fast and easy, or a little bit more involved, the faux marrow or the satin stitched edge. I have two ways for you to complete the satin stitched or marrow edge. One involves using a pre-cut circle, the other is involves cutting it in the hoop, and so that's what I'm going to show you today. Two ways to complete these two uh, finishes so that you can choose which one you think you'd like to use. So let's get this bean stitch one out of the way and let you have a look, if I can bring this up to the camera, at these two different edges. Um, the marrow is like what you would see on a patch and then we have the satin stitched edge. So because these cover the edges, you can use um, regular fabric or something that might otherwise fray uh, with these edges. I do want to caution you that if you're using fabric, make sure that you interface it or otherwise stabilize it so it doesn't stretch out of shape, especially if you're going to do the pre-cut method that you'll learn today. Both of these have a uh, clear vinyl overlay and we'll work that in as well. To do the pre-cut, you need a piece of tearaway stabilizer that will fit in at least a 4x4 hoop and that's how you're going to make and pre-cut the circle front and circle back if you choose the pre-cut method. For both methods, you're going to need some of the fabric-like water-soluble stabilizer. Now, some people like to do these patch edges using 100% um, polyester fabric or something else that you can cut really close with a hot knife around the edges, and you could certainly do that. But um, to make this accessible and successful for more people, we're going to use the water-soluble stabilizer. So this is the brand that I've been using. It's called um, H2O, um, and it is, um, you'll see once I get it hooped up, it doesn't look like the clear saran wrap kind. It looks more like a regular stabilizer, but it will dissolve in water. So once I stitch on it and cut around the edges of it, I can just use um, a little a damp rag or a toothbrush with a little water on it to get rid of all of the stabilizer around the edges. So to create our pre-cut, the first thing we need to do is to hoop up um, a 4x4 hoop with tearaway stabilizer. And I've gone ahead and done that and I've run the first stop on the design that is labeled coaster pre-cut in your, uh, once you unzip your file, you'll see it in there. And that just stitches an area that shows me where I want to lay down my vinyl to do the pre-cut. So I'm using this cork-like vinyl, which I got from my punk broidery, and I've cut it four and a half by four and a half. I'm gonna just tape it in place right over that circle. And you all know me and my tape. I get a little carried away because I find it helpful to not have that catch on my machine. Now, if I just stitch on this and cut it out, I'm only gonna have my front piece. So I'm also gonna flip it over to the back where I can see the stitching. And I am going to tape in place my backing. And I am using a felt for this one. Because these are covered um, along the edges with the faux marrow or the satin stitch, you can, if you want, um, use something that frays. Uh, you just have to be careful that when you're handling pre-cut pieces that they don't get stretched out of shape. So I've got this ready to go under the machine. I'm going to go give it a stitch and then I'll show you how we cut these out. All right, I've stitched over the top of this. Um, you may be able to see, I went ahead and used black thread so I could see the line really clearly for cutting. And so I've stitched through the front to the back and now I'm going to just pop these out and this gives me my line that I need to cut on. So I've got my, I have my duck build applique scissors, which are really sharp. 
and I'm going to cut on the line. This is a little tricky because I'm not right over it. It's always the challenge when I'm doing a video for y'all. But what I want to do is do my best to cut right on top of the line. If I'm going to air, I'm going to air a little bit toward the inside of the circle because when this um, stitches and when the, it lays the edge down, when we're making our coaster, that edge is going to fall just beyond that stitch line, like a needle's width. So we've got a little more room to the inside than to the outside. There will be a chance to clean this up in the hoop if I need to, so I'm not going to get too stressed out about it. But I'm going to just do my best to stay right on that line. If you're doing something, um, we've got a new release coming up which will use the same technique and have some straight edges. This method can actually save you some time, especially if you can use a rotary cutter. Um, so it's worth learning it. You may find it easier for something like this to just do in the hoops, whatever you prefer. So there's our backing for one of our coasters. Here's our front for one of our coasters. Now the next thing we need is we need some hoops to stitch these out in. So I'm going to uh, go get some hoops ready and uh, stitch just the placement stitch on them. And I'll be right back. All right, before we get any farther, let's take a look at our color stops. Um, I wanted to show you that I've started including these design notes to help you know when it's time to do something with an in the hoop design other than change the thread color. So I've already run our first stop, which is our position stitch. And I've run it on two separate hoops. We're going to do one with the pre-cut method and one with the cut in hoop method. But the stops are all going to be the same. Remember that I've already cut my pre-cut pieces using the pre-cut template design that's included in the zip file. Now I've uh, loaded the coaster design on the machine, run the position stitch, and it's time to lay our vinyl down. So on this one, we're going to set aside the backing for right now. I'm going to lay down the pre-cut and I'm going to try to get it as perfectly centered as I can. As I mentioned, if, you, if you're going to air, you want to air toward the inside. And this one, we want to just barely, barely, barely be able to see the um, position stitch under underneath the at the at the very very edge of this pre-cut piece. So I think that's fairly good. If it protrudes after we're done stitching it in there, if it protrudes at all over that stitching line, then we'll want to trim it, but we'll see how we do with that. Now for this one, we're going to cut it in the hoop. So for this one, I for have a four and a half by four and a half piece of vinyl. Again, the cork look vinyl from my punk broidery in a different color. And I'm just going to tape it down like so. All right, I'm going to go stitch the tack down stitch and then I'll show you how to cut this one out in the hoop. All right, so we took care of our position stitch. We laid our vinyl in and now we have sewn the material stitch. Um, or the material applique is what it's labeled. It's really a tack down. So let me show you what that looks like on the pre-cut. On the pre-cut, we don't have any trimming to do unless we see it peeking over the edge, which I do a little bit there. Um, we can pull this tape off. Now, the I wanted to mention something about the stabler, stabilizer I'm using. I'm using um, a water-soluble stabilizer because I like to be able to cut right around it and then um, apply some water and that stabilizer just melts away and gives you that nice finish like you saw on the ones at the beginning of the video. Um, and you don't want to, this is a very, very heavy edge stitch, so you don't want to try it um, on the thin saran wrap kind of stabilizer. Um, and 
So you'll notice I've got a little tape stuck like right there. I'm not going to worry about it because that's going to be covered up. And let's see if I can get this one. Come on, nails, do your work. Come on. I can get it, maybe. There we go. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you've got a little bit of tape stuck in there. This one now is ready to go. Um, before I put do the final stitch on it, I'm probably going to come back. In fact, let me do that right here. I'm just going to come back and trim this just a little bit because I can't see that placement stitch and I don't want that poking out through the edge of my satin or faux marrow stitch. So I just might have a couple spots like that. There's one where I cut a little crooked or didn't quite place it quite right in the placement stitch where I'm going to want to cut it back just a tiny bit so that it does a nice job for me. Yeah, maybe right there. That's probably okay. And just as you're looking at it, remember that the needle's going to come down just outside of that placement stitch. And that's going to be your edge. Okay, I think, I, I think I'm good. I can always decide to do a little more up until the point that we... Um, up until the point that we lay down that satin or marrow edge finish. So now I'm going to show you, this is the cut and hoop version. Same stop, did the same stitch, but because I didn't use a pre-cut now, I'm going to need to cut around the edge of this. Okay, so the trick with this is to get as close as you can to those tack down strips or sorry, tack down stitches, and cut back along that material stitch. Oop, I hit some stitches there. It's okay, it'll stay in place enough to do what we need. And what I'm doing is just pushing my blade as far as I can up there. As long as I don't hit a large number of stitches, I'll be okay. <laughs> um, I actually managed to pull one of these off that had like most of the stitching nipped because I wasn't doing a very good job. <sighs> okay, I'm going to take every so often I just like to get that bulk out of my way. And it kind of helps for me if I lift it up a little bit. It's a little hard for me to see with the camera in the way. So make sure you've got this right under you so you can see what you're doing when you're actually doing it. And you'll see that I'm cutting it back to the tack down, but around the edge you can see that placement stitch, which is about where the needle's going to fall. It'll fall just outside that when it lays on the pretty edge. Okay, so you can see this takes potentially takes a little bit more time, but I'm not sure that it, you know, by the time you add up hooping and loading the um, pre-cut, I'm not sure that there's a significant difference. So it really does, does you know, whatever, whichever way you want to do, you can come out with a good finished product. Okay, so that's trimmed down. There's a few places where I trimmed it a little tight. It's not, I'm not too worried about that. That's going to be caught inside. Um, I cut a little bit on that stitching, um, but that's going to be okay. That's going to be caught inside the edge, um, the satin or marrow edge that we put on it. So next, I have my two circles, they're both tacked down, and I'm going to stitch all the way from three to seven. These are design steps. So I'm going to stitch all of these on each coaster, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about how to attach the clear vinyl. Alrighty, I'm back. I have stitched the um, bottle, so we've stitched three, four, five, six, and seven. And you'll see that in um, stitching out these two different coasters to show you the two different methods that I have actually um, used some different colors. So there's a lovely red wine and there's a lovely white wine. Um, and now we're gonna lay the clear vinyl overlay on. So one of the things we wanna do is make extra sure that we have gotten all of our jump stitches because once that vinyl goes down and we stitch around it, if there are thread tails in there, 
they will be there forever. Let's see here. I probably should be grabbing my tweezers. Okay, come on you. There's a little fuzzy right there. That one will actually be outside where the vinyl stitch is. That one will be okay. I can get it once it's out of the hoop. So I've cut two pieces, um, one for each of these, of clear vinyl. This is a 16 gauge clear vinyl. Um, I think that gauge is the most reliable, um, reliably good for the most designs, so that's what I tend to use. I'm going to lay it down over the top of the um, bottle here, and when I'm living dangerously, I sometimes just kind of plop it in there and then watch it and hold it um, while the machine goes, but um, I think if I keep doing that one of these days, I'm probably going to stitch my finger. Um, all right, so that's taped down. I'm going to go stitch color stop eight. Now notice that this tells you right here, attach clear vinyl, and it lets you choose your color choice of what you want that outline of the bottle to be. I generally just go ahead and use the Skylight 0145. I think a light gray often looks really good um, when you're trying to emulate the edge of a bottle. So I'll leave the th color from stop seven in place and I'm gonna go um, stitch stop eight on both of these coasters. Okay, I have finished stitching color stop Eight, which attaches the clear vinyl and now I'm going to show you if you haven't seen um, my clear vinyl applique videos before I'll show you how to trim this if you have seen it before you know what you're doing you can just skip on ahead first I'm going to kind of get up in here and get rid of that tail now I like to kind of fold this can be a little tricky because it's, it's out in front of me instead of right with me looking right down on it. I like to put the blade of my scissors so that the fat blade is toward the stitching. It seems to protect them a little bit better because we don't want to nick the sti stitching. And I just want to get it started and then if your scissors are sharp enough you can just kind of glide along like that. And I find that that works best. I like to do both ends first. I think it just makes it easier, makes it less tempting to try to turn corners. Um, and anywhere that you trim where you're not going to stitch over, which in this design there's no stitching over the top of the, vine, the clear vinyl. You can um, just kind of get the bulk of it off and then clean it up out of the hoop if that's easier for you. Um, but there is going to be lettering here, so we want to kind of get this trimmed back. And you see I'm not really sawing, I'm just sliding. And let's do this. One more. Oop, come on. There we go. All right. So I've got that one trimmed. I have this one trimmed. Now you can see we've got two more color stops to go before we hit this number 11, which says material applique. That's when we're going to attach our backing. So let's go stitch 9 and 10. And then I'll come back and show you how to put on the pre-cut back and the cut in hoop back. Mission accomplished. I have stitched out stops 9 and 10, which are the lettering. Those are broken into two different um, stops so that if you want to make them different colors you can. If you want to leave them the same color, that's fine. Um, I did want to let you know that there are a few jumps to cut in between words. Um, but in between the letters, because this is such a small font, and um, I just ran itty bitty stitches that kind of sink into the vinyl and disappear, so you don't have to cut between every single letter. You just want to get these big guys right here and here. Um, my Janome, my fucking Janome, um, who is now named Sinead. Um, because she's a little bit crazy, but she gives a hell of a performance. Um, sometimes she'll pull that that trim, and um, there, that one looks good. Sometimes she'll pull that trim. Other times it gets stuck in the vinyl and leaves a little line like that. So I just have to go through and make sure that those are taken care of. All right, we are ready now. Per the directions, 
to attach our backing. So um, this is uh, the material applique um, stop up here in the design notes it lets you know that that's when you're going to put your backing in place. So this is the one we've been doing as a cut and hoop. So I'm going to flip it over. I've got my square and I'm going to just tape it in place. And up at the corners where it won't like get the stitches all embedded and cause more pain. Okay. Cut and hoop one, ready to go. Okay, pre-cut one. Flip it over, you've got your circle, and you're going to do the same thing you did on the back as you did on the front. That means I'm probably going to have a couple little places where I want to trim, but I'm going to center it in the space as best I can, and put a couple little pieces of tape here. I find that the tape doesn't always stick super well to the uh, water soluble, this fabric water soluble. Um, so you kind of got to be gentle when you put it in the machine so you don't peel your tape off and then have your back all over the place. So next we're going to go stitch number 11 which is going to tack these down and then come back and inspect and trim them. All right, we've done our tack down stitch. So from the front, you won't see much different except that it's added another line around that tack down. If I flip it over, you can see I've started to cut this. Um, this is the cut and hoop one. And I wanted to show you that one of the things that can be helpful is you kind of pull it straight up and snug your lower blade down in there. It lets you get close without getting too close. So I'm going to lift this up so that you can see, hopefully you can see, that you can see this the placement stitch right here, and that's what you want. You don't want any of this protruding over that initial placement stitch that went down on your stabilizer. All right, so I'll finish cutting that off camera. Now let me show you what we have for the uh, pre-cut. We put our circle on the back, just like we had on the front, and... I had a little moment where I forgot to put it back on the tack down stop. I'm going to pull that off. Felt is a little funny with this tape. Um, you could try using um, some spray adhesive to hold these down. Uh, I think it works okay on the fabric type water soluble, but I have heard from others do not try to use it on the plastic type ever because it melts it. Um, but I, I just use tape because it's quicker for me and I don't like breathing that stuff. So I rarely use it. Okay, come here, you bugger. Come on. Ooh. All right, there we go. Good enough for government work. Okay. So this one looks pretty ready to go. I'm looking at it here and I'm seeing that placement stitch is visible almost all the way around. I don't think I have any areas I need to trim, except maybe right in here. So I'm just going to come in, try not to cut the stabilizer. Cutting other things, not a big deal, won't be the end of your world. You cut a hole, too big a hole in your stabilizer, then you're going to have to try to patch it, and harsh words are said, and nobody better come in because you're stressed already. It's like when someone tries to talk to you while you're holding a seam ripper. Okay, I think that's gonna be okay. I can see that, just tipping it a little bit, I can see that position stitch all the way around the edge. I'm gonna trim this little thread here that got out to the side and this because I don't wanna to try to trim those once I've laid down my satin stitch. I'm gonna do both of these in the satin, um, but this is exactly the same process if you're gonna do the marrow edge. All right, I think we're ready to go. Oh, look, there's a thread. All right, I'm gonna go stitch these edges and when I come back, I'll show you how to cut these out and get rid of the extra stabilizer. And hold the phone. I forgot to tell you something important before I go stitch these out. Um, you will want to, if you want to have something other than white bobbin thread or black bobbin thread, whatever you're using on the bottom, you are going to want to fill a bobbin with the same color thread that you're using on top. And I highly recommend that um, so that you don't see little bits of white peeking out. So I'm gonna do this one in the green color, so I'm gonna wind a green bobbin. And I'm gonna do this one 
in the kind of goldish tan color and so I'm going to wind a bobbin in that and I'm going to pop that in when I'm doing them so that I match on both sides. All right, I've pulled this out of the hoop for a minute just to show you something um, that will help you out when you're doing the satin finish. Um, and I think I'm going to do, uh, I'll add a little clip of what this looks like for the marrow finish as well. This is halfway through stitching that last color stop. This is the underlay that goes under the satin stitch. And if you look closely, you can see that the outside of the underlay is falling right where that placement, right outside that placement stitch, right outside of my vinyl and the inside is catching all along here adequately. So that's one way you can tell if you're gonna if your if your edge stitch is going to grab grab well enough and to make sure that you don't have anything poking out. If you have something poking out beyond this underlay, you want to try to trim it now because if you don't, when it comes back through and stitches the final thing, you'll have a little bumpy there. So let's look at the back. And the back's pretty good. I've got a little bit of, of the edge stitching showing here, from, but I think once that's done stitching, I don't think that that's going to be an issue. It'll probably pull right off once I have the um, water soluble uh, gone. So I'm going to go finish stitching this, and um, then I am going to uh, throw a marrow edge on there so you can see what that underlay looks like and what it should look like when you're in the middle of that last stop. All right, I promised I would show an example of what the underlay looks like for the marrow, the faux marrow stitch, and this is it. So again, you can see that um, the stitching is covering the edge entirely. There's no bits of edge poking out, and that's how you know that you've got um, a good alignment and that it's going to stitch well. And same thing on the back. Um, you've got a good alignment all the way around. Um, on the marrow stitch, it comes in a little farther than the satin, so if you have a little bit of this tack down stitch showing, that's nothing to worry about. All right, both of these are stitched out. I've already cut one of them out, so you can see I just trimmed as close as I could um, around the edge and leaving just a little bit of that water soluble stabilizer in place. Let me pop this one out and we'll do the same thing. Um, and it doesn't have to be pretty because that's all going to get dissolved away. So I'm just going to cut. I'd rather leave a little extra than cut my stitches because then that would make me sad. Actually, I would probably say bad things. Okay, let's see here. Here we go, around the edge. So you can see these came out pretty much identically and really the only difference is that um, when you are, um, when you're putting them together that you've already cut the pieces so you don't have to sit there and cut them all out. So I'm gonna bring this plate over here and show you how I get rid of the rest of the water soluble stabilizer. My weapon, a toothbrush. You can dunk these all the way, but it takes a while for them to dry. And you don't wanna do this on your cutting mat or anywhere because this stuff gets kinda of sticky as it dissolves. So I'm just gonna kinda of wet it down. Oop, I got a little loose thread there I gotta deal with. Did not quite tie off properly. Okay. I know it's probably kind of hard to see. I should have probably gotten a different color of plate, but we tend to use white plates in my house. All right. And you can let it sit for a second and dissolve, eat more if you want. This is the same thing you would do if you were making a patch with water-soluble stabilizer. All right, so there, that's all gone. I'm gonna come through and trim these funky little threads here. Oh, 
I'll probably use my curved scissors and do a little better job of it. There we go. Oh, I think they're over. Oh, no, there they are. All right. So just clip any weird little thing that's sticking out there. If you have any placement stitch showing, etc. All right. And there is your finished coaster. Just lay these somewhere to dry and um, they'll be good to go. So if you like this video, um, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel. You can see our designs at our Etsy shop, which is below in the link. And I would encourage you to join our Facebook group where we have a heck of a lot of fun and where specials and discounts and new designs are always posted. Have a great day and thanks for watching.